Hey guys, and welcome to another episode here on The Learning Droid. Today in this episode we'll be looking at another artist collab, Rosie the Horse, and this is an artist collab with a woman called Mad March Moon Designs. Mad March Moon Designs can be found on Facebook and also on Etsy. I'll be linking through to her accounts or her pages on both of those. And basically she is a designer for paper cutting and all sorts. She's a designer and craftsperson who does 3D sculpting sculptures, um, 3D sculpting on journal books. So she does 3D book uh, journal book covers. She also does uh, designs for paper cutting, and paper cutting is an, an art which is exactly what it sounds like. Is you take a sheet of paper, you place a design on it, and you cut the design out. However, the designs have to be very clever in that every section has to be touching, because if you have any loose sections, of course, they're not going to stick around once you've cut away everything else. Any loose section is going to fall off. Now, my one of my relatives is, is a fan of paper cutting and does paper cutting, and this is how I found out about Mad March Moon Designs. I contacted her, had a little bit of a, a chat with her over Facebook, and basically got her permission to try using one of her designs for pyrography. Now, basically the idea is the way she makes her money, or a lot of her money, is she creates these designs and then you purchase the design, you either purchase the right to do the design for yourself, which is quite cheap, or you spend a little bit more and purchase commercial rights to the design, which allows you to do the design as a paper cut and then sell the paper cut. I think this is a particularly fair way of doing it. It means that um, no one has to breach her copyright. Um, and for this, we took one of her paper cut designs and the idea is to do a, a pyrography of it on two sides of a piece of wood and then the piece of wood could rotate and the design would be tweaked by myself for one side of the piece of wood so basically I'd make a dark version of it. Now unfortunately as has been happening an awful lot with my videos guys some of the film footage has gone missing or gotten damaged or gotten corrupted so at the moment we've only got a small piece. I'll see if I can salvage some of the other pieces of film footage and cobble something together but for now we've got this small section. As you can see there's one of the pieces I did earlier and unfortunately that footage at the moment has gone walkies. I think it's something to do with my camera. Could be something to do with the software I'm using at the moment or with my SD card. But I think it's something to do with my camera. I'll see what I can do to fix it. But for this piece I was using a spear point tip. And as you can see I've sped it up quite a lot because I was uh, moving quite slowly, working quite carefully. I am doing very little shading. I'm not doing an awful lot of shading on this piece because as with paper cuts, paper cuts are either the paper is there or it isn't. I wanted to keep that feel with the pyrography design and have either the burns be there or not be there, be a very sort of monotone, black and white style. I'm using a spear point tip and I'm using it in the Peter Child's machine. A lot of the fine edges are done with the sharp edge of the spear point tip and then I'm either using the broad edge or the main body of the spear point tip to do a lot of the shading. As you can see, the carousel horse is a quite a complex design, and it is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a carousel horse. Uh, it's got a flower design on its side and a flower design on its flanks, as you often get on, on carousel horses. Now, what I would say, guys, is be nice. Go and, go and um, say hello to Mad March Moon. Have, night, have a look. I will possibly be doing some paper cutting videos in the future, if that's something that interests you guys. I might even get in touch with Mad March Moon, see if we can do a little bit of collab work on that, see if perhaps she'll film some paper cutting for the channel. Now as you can see, it's all about, uh, especially with fine designs like this, it's all about picking which part of the pyrography tip you use, picking the right pyrography tip for design, um, and also being picking the right temperatures, picking it's all about making the right choices guys and it all comes from experience. I'm not hugely experienced and unfortunately because I had to take such a large gap because um, I started work for a company. While starting work for the company is a great thing, I'm, I'm very very thankful I have a job. It means I have a lot less time to work on pyrography, a lot less time to work on the channel. I would love it if the channel could pay me and be a full-time job. I would love to do 30 hours a week of pyrography, British Sign Language, 
um, and all sorts of other things for the channel but unfortunately it just doesn't work that way there's very few channels on YouTube that can afford to be full-time jobs uh, uh, most of the ones that can are video game channels you never know I might become a video game youtuber <laughs> I doubt that because I'm not very good at games but the sort of the pyrography side of it I haven't had a lot of chance to practice recently which is why some of the lines aren't as fine and aren't as detailed as I should hope because I've kind of fallen out of practice with my Peter Charles machine one thing I would like to do guys is get some more machines in at the moment I'm looking at uh, a set of machines by an American company called Walnut Hollow and I'm gonna see if I can get one of their machines um, it'll mean saving up for a little bit saving up a little bit of money but I'd love to do some more reviews of different machines and different tools because I think that one of the really popular things one of the things an awful lot of people like seeing on my channel is reviews of tools and reviews reviews of equipment because it gives them an idea of what the machine is like before they purchase it and unfortunately there aren't an awful lot of video reviews for pyrography machines at the moment so I'm looking at as I said Walnut Hollow I'm also looking at Firewire and um, there's another machine that I can't remember the name of. Oh, that's going to bug me now. But there's there's a couple of machines I'm looking at. The idea of getting hold of one and doing a review of it. I would love if I could get review copies of the machines, but they that doesn't work. You get review copies of games and books and things. You don't get review copies of pyrography machines, unfortunately. But hopefully I'll be able to get hold of some of those machines and I'll be able to do reviews of them and fingers crossed the reviews will actually pay for themselves will actually pay for the machine I mean I know the that some of the machines aren't hugely expensive which will be a, a big advantage um, and I'll be investing a little bit in in expanding the channels collection of reviews I'm also looking at possibly reviewing some other equipment like maybe some vapor masks and possibly some extractor systems depending on what I can afford what I can fit what I can get hold of because a lot of machines, unfortunately, an awful lot of machines are available only in America, where there's admittedly a much bigger market, which makes it far easier for them to produce and sell them. And also quite a few makers of the machines are actually American based, which is why a lot of the machines are based in America. And now, guys, you can see the designs come together quite well for the most part. Um, at the end of this video, there is a section where you'll be able to see all the pieces that were done. I'm just working on the tail. I'm also trying to tweak the camera position guys as you can guess or as you can see the uh, camera is a lot closer in this video than it was a couple of videos ago that's because I'm trying to get the camera nice and close so you can see what's going on because it's one of the biggest comments I've got is people want to get nice and close to the pyrography tip. Unfortunately one of the problems with that is I'm not sure because I have I'm in front of the camera because the camera's in front of me and, and it's facing down onto the desk. I can't see the flip screen of the camera, so I don't know what the camera's filming, so sometimes the piece slips off the edge of the camera screen because I literally can't see what I'm filming. <laughs> so I'm, ha I'm having to make educated guesswork about where the camera is pointed. <laughs> Sorry, pardon, pardon me. Um, make educated guesswork about where the camera is pointed based upon sort of how I set it up. Fine lines are always going to be the hardest thing to do in pyrography, guys, because heat naturally travels, so you're going to get a lot of burn, um, sort of bloom burn. And one of the problems with cutting across the grain is you're going to get uneven bloom burn, where there's different densities in the grain. And bloom burn is where the burn burns outwards in little globe from where you've placed the tip. If you're looking for very, very fine burns, then you want a very, very fine tip, and you actually want to work with a lower temperature and spend longer because that will reduce the bloom burn but for the most part you just have to be very careful and quite smooth with how you're moving it if you're getting a lot of bloom burn when you're cutting across grain it may be that the grain density variation is too great in that piece of wood you can cut down some of the grain based bloom burn by very very carefully smoothing the wood with uh, very very fine grain sanding paper then cleaning it off and very very careful prepping of the wood but unfortunately the grain because the grain is uh, variations in the density of wood it is going to cause variations in how that wood burns so burning across grain is always going to cause slight variations in how the burn works how the burn looks for each portion of grain as I always say 
always protect yourself guys either use an extraction system or a mask I know it is just burning wood but you've got your nose right down into the wood and breathing in smoke for a long period of time isn't good for you guys so always get a vapor filter mask or an extraction system use one of those and it'll be a good good thing for you in the long run I'm asthmatic so it's a good thing for me in the short run because if I wasn't wearing my mask when I use this and I use an ABK filter so I use a very high quality filter if I wasn't using that then it would be a bit awkward and probably wouldn't be very good for me at all and there's me just experimenting and, and lining things up and checking and as you can see there's both sides there's the dark side versus the light side and as you can see the light side has a lot more detail on it I'm actually taking out some of the detail on the dark side here so this is the dark side of the lower half and I actually burnt in the details on both sets. I burnt in the detail on both sides because I wanted to basically be able to pick which side had the better, better lines on it. And there you go. I'm just neatening up the flags and, and just a little bit of tidying. With any design that crosses over multiple pieces of wood, I always like to do a little bit of tidying up afterwards because it does take a little bit of tidying just to like get the pieces of wood lined up and, and get everything working right and there you go guys there's the finished piece and this is just me giving it a sand over with some nice um, abronet style sanding paper some nice webbing style sanding paper it lasts longer and it also gives a finer finish in my opinion that's some very very fine sanding paper it's just and one of the things you have to realize guys is a lot of the bloom burn, a lot of the very fine burn that you get, um, fine bloom burn you get will disappear after you've given it a light sanding. There's a slightly uh, lighter piece of sanding paper, slightly uh, high, higher grit. And just a quick sand all over, helps to sharpen up the edges a bit, helps to get rid of any overburn and just helps to finely edge up because as you burn you are going to get little rough bits and there's me and I'm upside down <laughs> oh what have I done here with this camera one second guys there we go that's got it the right way up. And there you go. That's the finished piece. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.